Hey guys, today we're going to be tying the tube hatch jig. It's named after the Laura Provo's most infamous hatch. Hopefully this one treats us fly fishermen a little bit better. I've been fishing this as a dropper above a bunny royale on my urine frig lately and it's treated me very well. The PMD version is perfect for the hatches that we've been seeing on the middle Provo lately. And it's caught me a lot of fish, at least an even amount with the bunny royale, which is still an amazing fly. Anyways, I encourage you to try these out and tie up a few. If you're not a tire, they're available in my shop right now at troutfliesutah.com. So in the vise, I've got a Firehole Styx 516 jig hook. On it, I have a 2.5 millimeter black nickel tungsten bead. I'm gonna be tying in my materials with Semperfly Nano Silk 30 denier. This thread is GSP and I think it's necessary for this fly because we really want to limit the amount of bulk we build into it with the thread and we need to be able to crank down on some materials so the GSP is really good for that. I don't think you'll be able to get away with tying this up with say 70 denier UTC thread and white. That just won't work. For tailing material I'm going to be using uh, Coq de Leon. I'm measuring out the length of the hook and just tying in like half a dozen fibers. CDL is great for this. This particular one is medium pardo, but any tailing fiber that you prefer would work for this. If your tail's a little too long, you can always gently pull on it to length. Go ahead and clip off the tag ends. For wire ribbing, we're going to be using copper brown UTC ultra wire and small. So, like I said, we're using GSP and it's really slick, so you got to kind of crank down a little bit when you're tying in your materials, or else it'll slip out a lot on you. So I'm trying to build a very slight taper, but again, I'm trying to avoid loading up too much bulk here. For body material, I'm going to be using hairline microtubing. This is pheasant tail color. Again, I'm struggling a little bit with the GN or GSP's holding power, but we got it tied in. I crank down as I go back towards the tail to kind of preserve that taper we built in. The microtubing will kind of compress on itself. So next we're going to take that micro tubing and rib the body of our fly. We want touching wraps going forward. I'm pulling this pretty tight to shrink the size of the tubing down and slowly letting off on the tension as I move up the fly. This will also help build in a slight taper, which is what we're looking for here. Once you get to behind the bead, go ahead and secure your tubing and snip it off close. Again, with this GSP, you want to kind of lock everything down with tight thread tension. So next, we're going to take our copper brown wire and rib the fly in between each of the tubing wraps. This will lead to even segmentation. And if you want a little less flash in your fly, you can kind of add a little extra tension and pull it down into the crevices between the microtubing wraps. So you can either get a more or less segmented look depending on how far into the microtubing you pull the wire. But here this is just about like a medium amount of tension so it still pro provides a little bit of segmentation and flash but it doesn't it is kind of keeping the slim profile intact. So go ahead and helicopter it off once you reach the they're behind the bead. For a soft tackle, I'm going to be using a golden brown CDC feather. I put it in a clip and I'm going to put it in a split thread dubbing loop. We just need a small amount of 
DDC fiber if we don't want too bushy of a soft collar. What's nice about the nano silk is it's very loosely coiled, so you only really need to spin it counterclockwise a little bit to get it to flatten out and to the point where you're able to split it. So I'm putting the CDC into the split loop and then I'm going to cord it back up. Alright, as you start wrapping the CDC fibers around, screen them back, each thread wrap you do will help lead to a little bit cleaner look. And we want those CDC fibers out of the way when we put our ice dub collar behind the bead. So I'm just kind of prepping the fibers right here so they don't make too much of a mess. For a collar, we're going to be using ice dub purple. Everybody likes the purple fly, right? Anyways, we just want to use a small amount. We don't want our collar to be too wide. We want a really narrow one. This is a little bit short of a noodle. So after I wrap this, you're going to see I'm going to have to add a, another short segment to it. But just wrap your eye stub behind the bead. You can make your collar as big or as small as you want. This one looked a little small to me, so I felt like I needed to add a little bit more material. This will just be about a turn and a half more. Once our eye stub collar is done, go ahead and take your nice TMCO midge sized whip finish tool and do a seven or eight turn whip finish. I like to do a few more turns with this GSP because again, it's very slippery. What's nice about here is you can really crank down on it and seat that knot without breaking off the thread. Go ahead there and snip off the tag end. Then, as with all my flies that I sell, I add a little bit of head cement right on the thread wraps. But that's it. That's the tube hatch jig. It's a great little kind of in-between an attractor and a imitative pattern, but it's done really well when the PMDs are out. I also tie this in a olive color, which, you know, might match a betis or a small Caddis Emerger. This one uses olive CDC, peacock eye colored ice stub, olive micro tubing, and chartreuse colored UTC ultra wire. Both patterns have worked really well and they're both available in my store. I tie it in a 16 and an 18. Both sizes work well. I encourage you to tie up a few. Anyways, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please like it down below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and want to see more tying tutorials, please consider subscribing to my channel. Again, these flies are available at troutflycutaw.com. But as always, after all my tutorials, I like to show proof of concept. So let's go into a few fish catches. It's a PMD. All right, that PMD is gonna make me switch up. Right, I put on one of my experimental flies. It's a PMD-ish type of deal with some micro tubing, wire, and purple ice stub. See if the fish like it. I saw a PMD buzz around, so decided to switch.
Yep, PMDs are definitely hatching. There we go. That's an energetic one. Interested to know which one he's on. Ooh, he's on the experimental, on the prototype. Awesome. Nice to know you throw a new fly on and catches a fish in the first five minutes. He completely blew up my rig, right? Yep. Nice brown trout on that, or little brown trout on that prototype. There we go. Another whitey. See if I can keep this one above me. Took the prototype. Might have to do a tutorial on this one. It's another pretty fat white fish. Let's clear our hooks. There's one. There's that prototype. Pretty white fish. Oh. <laughs> we flopped right back into the net. All right, let's get you turned around. Yeah. There you go. That's a big fish. I think it's a whitey. See if I can keep him above me here. As I get out of frame of camera, hope the GoPro's recording. It's not even that big, he's just angry. What fly is he on?
Oh, I think he's on the experimental. Yep. He's on the experimental, the PMD looking thing. That's cool. Let's get back in front of the camera too. All right. rolling in the net. Come on. Just be upside down. There you go. Nope. There we go. You splash you guys. Looks like it. Anyways. Show you off. There you go. All right, swimming away. Kinda. Until you get stuck in a log. Come on. You up right now? They're good now.